Since the beginning of the year, we've lost probably at this point 70 to 75,000 agents due to the fact that there's not enough work out there, not enough business out there for everybody. Today, I wanna to talk about being a real estate agent and learning how to pivot when the market changes, right? The people that are doing well, some of them are doing better than last year when it was really, really good. Why do they do well and others don't? Guys, it's because they pivot. They try new things. They look into areas other people aren't looking at. So if you guys want to learn a little bit about how you can do the same thing, stay tuned because I want to get right into it. Right, the first thing we want to talk about is where you're at right now. If you're just getting into the business or you've been in it for a while, I mean, I know what it's like to burn out after doing something for a long time, but guys, I'm telling you, there's things out there that you can do, and today we're gonna to talk about one thing specifically, and that is working with <laughs> investors, right? The people, the exact people, when you were coming up through the ranks, that everybody told you to avoid, those are the ones you should be running towards right now. Why is that? Well, I'm doing it, I've done it for years, and it's made me money through every single downturn that we've experienced in the last 17 years, right? We've gone through three or four of them, some bigger than others, like 2008, 2009, but working with investors is what pulled my butt out of the ditch, what made it so that we could actually keep feeding our family. How did I do it? Guys, I found out what they're looking for. Here's the biggest problem that I see when agents work with investors. They bring properties that they think the investor is going to want, right? They don't find out the neighborhood. They don't find out the bedroom and the bathroom count, the square footage, the top price they're willing to pay, the, the size of the lot. Guys, one of the things is, so I wear many hats. I'm a flipper. I do buy and hold, I do some wholesaling, and I'm a real estate agent. One of the things that I hate is when someone brings me something with a big lot. I am not interested in buying any houses with big lots because as a flipper, I've got to landscape that. That's a lot of plants, a lot of gravel, a lot of mulch, a lot of sprinklers, you get the idea. As a landlord, same problem. I don't want to have to upkeep a yard that's that big and I can't trust my tenants to do it. I like smaller lots, that's just the way it is. And I prefer two bedroom, one bath houses for flipping and for buy and hold. Reason is, or a three one is fine too. The reason is, is because there's not as many people looking for those, right? So I'm looking for houses that aren't as competitive as like say your average three to 1400 square foot style ranch house on a 7,000 square foot lot here in Southern California, which would go for 1.2 million, insane. But anyway, those are the things that I specifically want from the people that bring me deals. And so often they bring me what they want to feed me. Look, I've got specific tastes. When I go out to a restaurant, when I make food at home, I'm very particular about what I eat. I'm very specific, right? I don't eat just anything. And there are some things that I really, really dislike. The same thing with investing, the same thing with rentals. I don't like certain properties. And I'm going to tell people that wanna work with me what to avoid. Uh, I'm going to tell them 100% what to avoid. I'm going to tell them 100% what exactly I'm looking for. We're talking the price point. We're talking about how much rehab I want to do, how big the lot is, how big the house is, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Does it have to have a good school district? I'm specific about what I want. And I'm not even area specific so much anymore because there's so little inventory. But I'm specific about what I want and how much I want to spend. If you can find out that information from your investors, they will stay with you. Even if you only bring them one or two deals a year, they will continue to open your deals as long as they're damn close to what they want. They will stop opening your emails around the fourth or fifth time you send them something they don't want, right? So a lot of times as wholesalers, we'll send out everything to everybody, and that's fine. But when you're specifically bringing a property to an investor, don't waste your time or their time bringing them something that they specifically said they don't want. If you've got a relationship with one of these investors, sometimes you can throw a wild card in there. Now, I've bought wild cards from trusted uh, agents before. So uh, just as an example, probably three years ago, we bought a property in a place in LA that was very, very up and coming. The problem is, is it was a three-story hillside house, 4,500 square foot, including the basement, and a lot of hillside landscaping. 
exactly what I don't look for in a house, but the upside was nearly a million dollars. Didn't turn out that way. Still turned out wonderful. We made a ton of money, but it wasn't a million dollar deal. But regardless, I said no at first blush. And this was from an agent that I know, trust, and we are actually friends. And he said, Mark, you really need to look a little deeper into this one. This is a major home run. I guarantee it. Um, and when this guy says he guarantees it, he can back it up. So I took a look at it. I took a chance with it and we made a ton of money. Now, do I still want to do those kind of houses every day? Not really because they take so long at so many plan checks and so many inspections and things like that. I don't really want to deal with that all the time. I really like the easy in and out 50 to $100,000 profit margin flips. So find out what they want. If you deal with them long enough, you can throw them those curveballs, and then you can make more money and they can make more money. I also gave him the relist on that and I think we co-listed it. And so he made money on the way in, on the way out. Beautiful thing for him, beautiful thing for me. So those are the kinds of deals you're looking for, guys. And speaking of the relist, if you can get the relist, that is where your power comes from. Now, you may say, well, Mark, you're an investor and you list all your own properties. Yes, I do. But there are occasions where I will co-list with someone, especially if it's out of my area. I'll need someone to be there for open houses, even though I can find my own people. I might need boots on the ground if it's far, far away. So sometimes I will co-list with an agent and uh, we'll decide whose sign goes up out front. Look, I'm more into saving money than having a sign out with my name on it. I really don't care. But those are other ways that you can make money. So pivot, guys. Pivot, pivot, pivot. If something isn't working right now, like let's say you're door knocking trying to find what we call retail clients, people that are going to buy or sell every seven to ten years. That's great, but those are far and few between right now. And door knocking is not probably the best way to get those right now because pretty much everybody's locked into their mortgages. They're afraid to move. If they have to move, eh, that's a different story. Then they're going to be reaching out. The thing is, guys, you can make money working with investors. That's the bottom line. And I want you guys to seriously look into it. In the show notes down below, we're gonna have a link for a free video series on how to get your first five investor clients. Guys, I want you to try it. I want you to see how it works. If it does work, all I'm asking you for you is to drop me a line and say, hey Mark, that was pretty cool, thank you. And that's it. And if you didn't like it, let us know. Let us know what you would like us to change. We're here to help you guys navigate through this economy that we're in right now. Zero inventory and, and multiple offers on houses. Let's get to the point where you can be in control of your income so that the market is not. That's one of the things that I learned early on in this business is you can control the market. You might have to pivot. You might have to work a little bit harder, but you absolutely can control it. We are still getting deals. We've got two listed right now, two still under construction. We're working on one other land deal right now. So we're still moving along at a, quite a nice clip right now. You guys can be doing the same thing if you learn exactly what you need to learn so that you can do it. Working with investors is the first step, guys. So go download that at, in the notes down below. Go download that so that you can also get started. Hit me up on Instagram. If you like this, please hit the like button, sign up for notifications, and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. That gets it out to more people so we can help more real estate agents become better agents and investors too. All right, guys. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time.